Carl and Damon here from Games, Brains and Headbanger Live, GBHBL.com for sure. And it's They Made What into a TV series, episode number six of The Last of Us. It feels like weeks since we've talked about The Last of Us, but it's literally been a little over a week. Yes, and this episode was called Kin, K-I-N, which, you know, if you didn't know where the show was going, I think you could harbour guests. That would likely result in Joel meeting up with his brother Tommy in this one, seeing as kin is a terminology for family. But of course, it's Last of Us, you never know that. Before we get into a little bit about the plot and all that, uh, after last week's episode, and obviously the Sam and the um, that episode and all of that, were you quite pleased overall, or did you want to kind of continue a sort of more frantic action paced thing, or were you kind of pleased to take it down a notch again? No, I, I, I said it in the last episode, and I'll say it again. I've never seen a show where it hasn't got to have any of the monsters in it, and it's still an amazing episode. So is you that know? what you think? Do you think this was an amazing episode? I think uh, I think obviously it was a bit of obviously a bit down from the from the last episode, but I think with just a story, I, I still think it was a brilliant episode. I agree with you. I think it was a great episode. Um, I think it had brilliant moments. I think there were parts I felt maybe felt a little rushed. Um, and uh, but but regardless of that, like I I feel like when I look at this episode, that anything I have a problem with is almost nitpicky, and that's kind of what I'm noticing we're getting now, right? So we're gonna actually go off a little bit differently here. So I spent a little time today, the time of recording, kind of doing a little bit of nosing around the internet, trying to get a, a clearer balance of what seems to be the consensus opinions of the show. And um, because, you know, you, you you do something like hashtag The Last of Us on Twitter, you'll get a wide range of views that are, 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 I think are some of us quite hurt, hurt, hy hyperbole in mm. the sense that I don't like every episode is the best thing ever. No, don't, not everything is the best thing ever. And I don't think this was the best episode overall to date. I think it was, a, you know, and stuff like that. I do agree with the consensus. This is probably up there as one of the best video game movie, uh, TV show, video game adaptions of all time. But with that, I'm noticing a trend, right? And I don't know how I feel about this yet because I don't think it interferes in the watching if you don't know. I've noticed a subset of fans who are obsessed to a degree, I think, with pointing out how every scene relates to the game, if particularly if it's a particular scene from the game, and if a line is missing or a bit of dialogue is missing or something's done differently, they it's often like, oh, yeah, well, they did that differently. Only it was okay, but, you know, I preferred it in the game. And it's like, what? whoa, whoa. Like, oh, yeah. you know, let's be grateful and glad that we've got a show that follows the game so true, like to such a level of degree of truth and uh, accuracy but obviously it has yeah. to do its own things compared to what we've had in the past and i don't know if it's just it is just that now because we're up to episode six that now and there's like where you've been sitting there with your arms folded going where's the shit i want to complain about where's it gonna fuck up and why is it oh they've done this wrong and they've done that wrong and they've done this wrong and so on that that doesn't mm. exist so now it's like okay well that could have been better and you know like you're, you're nitpicking basically because it's too good i don't know yeah. it's a weird complaint <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's practically impossible to follow a game uh, literally scene by scene. It is impossible, mm. you know. And I, and I think they've done a very good job. I, I mean, I do agree it is definitely the best game adaption that I have seen. It, I mean, I, and we've done that. We've covered a lot. A lot, yeah. And it, it is one, I mean, this and Halo are the best two I've seen in a long time. God, you know what? I was doing a some more uh, around the same time last early last week. I was doing a bit more nosing around in a halo. My God, you know what? We are in a minority. Mm. We really are in a minority. Uh, wow. A lot of people and a lot of people that I um like I take their opinions w like well. Like I listen to them because I trust their opinions, you know, and stuff like that. And of course, that's the point. It's just their opinion. But I've been surprised kind of by how many people who kind of just like, no, it's shit, it's a terrible adaption and all that kind of thing. Maybe, like I said, when we like, like, we, like we talk about in the Halo coverage, maybe a major part of it is that we don't really, either of us, me and David, don't care for Halo. That's why I'm able to get along with it so well. But I'm yeah. also very aware that The Last of Us has a similar thing in that if you love The Last of Us, you fucking love it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you love it. Yeah, definitely. Today, what is the one consistent criticism that you have noticed about the show that seems to still exist now? 
Have you noticed any? Uh, I, I mean, just uh, I suppose, I suppose the, the, the the main the main one I've seen is just that the, the it's, it's, it's the actress that uh, on, on Bella Ramsey that yeah. people are not happy with her with her being the the, the lead female role, which I don't it, personally I don't get. That's it. Uh, I brought, I, 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 again, I weight loaded that question because I already have my answer. And it's weirdly enough, I do notice that seems in a lot of the criticism seems to surround Bella Ramsey as Ellie, whether it's a, a mix of they find her annoying or they don't find her right for the role. Now, what really highlighted this for me is um, I visited a relative a few days ago. Uh, well, basically my mother, uh, our mother, um, you know, who's elderly? And doesn't play games, has never really played games. And if you asked her before this show existed what The Last of Us was, she would not have a clue, not have a clue at all. Anyway, we were talking about some shows and stuff. And I said, oh, are you watching The Last of Us? And she said, yeah, yeah. I said, are you enjoying it? She was like, yeah, I think it's really good. And I was like, you know, it's from a video game and all that. And she's like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's, I am enjoying it. Don't like that girl, though. And I, and I went, why? Oh, I just find her annoying. And I thought, oh, okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. And I wonder how many other people who don't know the game, so aren't doing the whole, that's not my Ellie, mm. are, you know, because I can almost understand to a certain degree why some people might find her annoying. And I think this episode's a good highlight of when he might find some of her, her, oh, her confidence and banter and speaking and her, uh, 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 brutishness, offishness, kind of off particularly if you're of a certain era i think seeing a young someone that's supposed to be 14 year olds a young girl speak and talk and act in the way that she does even though that's very reflective of modern times might put them back maybe i'm overthinking it maybe i'm overthinking it it's just got it just got me wondering yeah i suppose i suppose i suppose that yeah she, she can come across quite annoying but i think uh, for me personally i think overall she does a, a very good job you know I mean, considering that this, this show is basically surrounded by two main characters and a lot of side characters, it's this show is about these two. And I think they both, I mean, obviously, obviously, uh, Pascal is amazing. You know, he, he is really, really good. And obviously, but I, I still think they both hold mainly, obviously, her, her part, obviously, she's paying a child. Um, she's paying, I mean, her attitude, the way she speaks. She's playing very overconfident, for, in, in my opinion, but she's also very scared, uh, yep. as, 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 as you find out in this episode. Yeah, we're both fans. We are. We, uh, we're down with Bella Ramsey. We're down with what she does with Ellie. Um, I don't really care about the whole not my Ellie thing. You know, I've watched uh, characters I care way more for being butchered on the big screen with adaptions and stuff like that. It's just a character. Let's get over it um, and stuff like that. So for me... No issues there. And I actually really liked her. I really enjoyed her in this episode. There's a scene at the dinner table and eating where she's such a little horror and basically embarrassing, embarrassing Joel as well that yeah. I just, I, I I thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> now, what I didn't expect, I don't know how you expected this, but uh, after the Henry and uh, Sam situation with the last, we actually jumped three months later. Three yeah. months later, which I was like, oh, cool, because obviously we start now more wintry time, a wintry landscape, uh, snow and all that. Oh, on that, so I don't forget it, this episode might be the most, the best looking episode, the yes. most cinematic, most um, captivating to watch the area and the aerial shots of the land and the locations. Loved a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it looks like it was set somewhere like in like, in like really Alaska, I know, because that's how good it was. Yeah, I probably could find out where it was filmed. Um, oh, uh, Ca Canmore, Alberta. Alberta okay. was used to replicate Jackson, uh, which is in Canada. Uh, so there you go. Oh. Cold. But yeah, it is a beautiful looking episode. But three months after that, Joel, you know, it made sense. Joel and Ellie have been on the road. They have no vehicle at this stage. They're on foot. It's going to take them a long time to cross America. It's going yeah, to take them some time. Obviously, still trying to make the way Wyoming. Uh, they end up run meeting uh, Marlon and his wife Florence, who are like two um, Native American um, um, Americans, kind of just going away in a cabin. I love this. This shit. I laughed more times in this first five minutes with these two characters than I did at any other yeah. point. Yeah, definitely. Hilarious. They're both they're both so laid back. They both basically don't they, they don't give a shit. Uh, they're proper laid back, and they're, they're both mm -hmm. like a typical old married couple. 
Yeah, yeah. It's just this a banter back and forth about you, you gave him soup. <laughs> it's just that. It's just good stuff, man. It's good stuff. But they talk to them, and uh, Joel relaxes a bit and asks for some basically directions, directions to where I need to get to where the Fireflies camp is in Wyoming. And he shows them on a map, and basically, but he talks about a river and saying, "Look, don't cross that river. It's a river of death." Um, it's not just the infected that wash up dead there are other people and so on and um, if your brother Tommy went there or is there he's probably dead uh, you know um, so yeah we kind of like that and I was like alright river of death okay that's interesting what, what that means yeah. I don't think that actually really comes to anything at all I know what it's used in conjunction with but I think it's like quite hyperbole really yeah yeah I mean I, I, I was thinking like this is going to be some major Bloody like mon- like monster scene coming up, you know. They're going to be like monsters crawling out of the rivers, and I, that's what I thought, you know. But just just hearing and hearing the name, and obviously, I, I, I love the bit when the, when the old lady says to him, uh, she goes, "Oh, that's not scary." He goes, "Oh, it scared him, though." Yes, yes, yes. They're so on the ball like that. I mean, later yeah. on, we will actually get from Tommy an explanation in that. Jacksonville, the town that exists on the other side of the river, basically is happy to have that reputation, even though they don't really do what it's being said, because a yep. reputation like that keeps people away. That's mm-hmm. what they're trying to do. But here we start to see the problems that uh, Joel started to have is he, as stepping out and leaving with Ellie, worried now, scared for his brother. He basically has a short panic attack. You know, it, um, Lou thought it was a heart attack, but I was like, no, 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 it's more of a panic attack yeah, kind of thing. We can't attack, breathe yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah, as they then continue onwards, they end up coming across the Hydro Dam. A lot of people complained online that that section of the game wasn't utilised. It's an important section of the game. I, 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 I've got no feelings on it. Sometimes we can't, you can't have every section of the game going in. What would have happened there? Do you know, they, they see the Hydro Dam, they look at it, they talk about it, and they move on. Uh, I mean, people have got to remember, okay, that each episode is, is only 50, 50, 55 minutes long, okay? If it, it, it's, it's impossible to do it word for word, scene for scene, it is impossible. Not only that as well, you know, it is an adaption. Adapt. 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 Exactly. That's yeah. what it is. Um, but they end up getting ambushed by a group who are on horseback. This scene is so tense. Where they use a dog to sniff out Joel and Ellie to see if they're infected. And Joel's thinking, and we're all thinking it, but Ellie's infected. Even though she hasn't turned, will the dog fit, smell that on her? Will it cause a problem? And they do it in a really good way as Joel almost seems to start to have a panic attack again as he starts to get yeah. ringing in his ears. And then it cuts straight through to see Ellie playing with the dog. Yeah, so, uh, I, for 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 a moment there, I, I thought I thought he was gonna like like dive from the dog or something like and dive in front of her, sort of like it. I, I thought he was having flashbacks of his daughter again. You know, obviously when she got killed. So I thought, is he gonna jump in the way? But obviously, it didn't happen. No, it didn't. It didn't at all. Um, and these people on horseback end up leading them to a safe community, a gated, walled off community called Jackson in Wyoming. Very, very. They basically made a nice life for themselves. Kids, people living big high walls, dealing with any problems that come along. They've even got electricity from the Hydro Dam. They're basically living a comfortable, kind of happy life, so to speak. As much When they first enter that town, you can kind of sort of see how the uh, the apocalypse the apocalypse that occurred set humanity back, you know. It's mm. almost like an old school Wild West town with like hand saws and things like that. I like yeah. the look of it, though. Yeah, it's, it's it, 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 literally. Uh, I mean, they've they, they they managed to capture a lot of unbelievable pictures in, in, in every episode so far. Yeah, and it's here immediately. I'm glad they didn't drag it out that Joel is reunited with Tommy, uh, played by Gabriel Luna. Hasn't been seen since the first episode. Thought they did a good job of aging him up. He looks thinner, mm. looks more gaunt, and the moustache makes a big difference. Yeah, definitely, definitely. He, he's definitely aged by like thirty years. You, you can tell. You can tell. I wouldn't have got, I don't know if I'd go that far. I think well, I would have gone he's, up. He's young, he, 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 he's younger, brother, and he's obviously, obviously uh, so he's, he's probably like, I don't know, I, 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 they don't tell you like the exact ages, but he's de- he, he's definitely the younger one, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how much younger, but yeah, you are right. But yeah, so their reunion is lovely. It really is, you know. It's heartwarming. It's a momentarily, momentary heartwarming scene. In it. Don't get me wrong, you're like, all right, well, five minutes later, Lou's like, when's, Lou said to me, when's he going to die? I'm like, chill out, man, chill out. <laughs> um, but there, you know, they basically also meet uh, Maria, who is uh, Tommy's wife, Tommy's wife. And she's played by Retina Wesley. 
Um, she gets a great scene because I thought, okay, well, she's not really going to be in this much, no doubt. But she gets a really strong scene with Ellie when she's cutting Ellie's hair in the house yeah. and they're kind of talking back and forth. She talks about what she did in the past. In fact, this episode delves way more than ever before into the past where people talk about what they did before the infection and stuff like that. Yeah, it was also a way of Ellie finding out what happened to Joe's daughter, Joe's daughter, because he was never going to tell her. Yeah, we'll get to this. This is where Maria accidentally does drop that Joel lost his door because Ellie sees a shrine in Tommy's house to two children. And we, I said to Lou, oh, Sarah's on that, which is the daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, basically Ellie asks about it. So sorry about your kids. She's like, well, only one of them was mine. The other was Joel's. And then she's like, oh, well, I guess you didn't know that. And we kind of get to that. Mm-hmm. Um During that as well, Tommy and Joel are talking. Basically, Joel's kind of presuming, unfairly presuming, I think, that Tommy is just going to up sticks and come with him. Come on, come on, we're going to take her to the fire. Can you show show me where the firefly place is? And basically just up sticks. And immediately you can tell that Tommy's kind of, you know, not too sure about it and all that kind of thing. He then reveals to Joel part of the reason why as well he can't risk his life anymore, why he's kind of a changed man, is that Maria's pregnant which does sort of result in them having a little bit of, not an argument, but a little bit of harsh words, including Tommy saying something that could be, it's a little bit cruel, particularly of Joel's issues. And Joel does, you know, he walks out and he goes outside and he's starting to have a panic attack again. But he also, he now sees a woman that from the back could be Sarah with the hair and all of that. And you see the pain on his face, man. Pain on his face. I uh, say again, man. He he he, he is absolutely. Um, uh, he, I, 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 I haven't seen Mandalorian yet, but I, I only saw him in Game of Thrones uh, for, for like two seasons and that. But he, this guy can act, man. He, he's really good. Well, no spoilers, but the Mandalorian keeps his mask on most of the show. Yeah, so there you go. But but without spoiling, there has there is a there is an a, 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 there is emotion in that. But you'd understand when you see it. But I thought, um, yeah, of all the acting in this episode, I think. Uh, Pedro Pascal is at this is his best episode so far I think this is his Mm. best work but I also want to credit Gabriel Luna who does a really brilliant job of not just seeming torn between his current life and his responsibilities for an affection for his brother I think that's really good but immediately bear in mind that their screen time was a handful of minutes in the first episode pre the infection this is the first time we're seeing them together post the apocalypse I thought the chemistry was great. I believed one hundred percent they were brothers. Uh, I, I, I also, I also, I, I, I agree with that definitely. Yeah, but I, I also um, believe he, I, I also saw fear because obviously when you when you delve a bit more into Joel's history and their history together, it sort of it comes across to it's basically sketchy. he was forced forced to kill people to follow his brother. Right, that's said in it, but I don't think that's... The, I, I, I said to Lou, that's a cop-out. That's an excuse and a way for him to not... Or others to make him seem not as guilty. It's a cop-out, mate. They were in, they, they they survived together. Of course, yeah, exactly. But it, they, it, it, they have, a it, it's a sketchy past. They both have sketchy past. They've done things they wish they didn't have to do. It's mm-hmm. as simple as that. Um, But yeah, later, Joel ends up speaking with Tommy and basically breaks down... And he explains to Tommy about Ellie's immunity. There was a great scene here. It's really subtle. I think, you know, Lou didn't notice it. When he does get, explain about Ellie's immunity, Tommy moves towards the door, yeah. looks at the door, and then chooses to pull a chair up. There was a split choice there. He could leave and tell Ellie would be killed and basically burn his relationship with Joel to the ground. Yeah. Or he could sit and listen. And he chose to sit and listen because he trusted his brother. Of course, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw it. He, he, he's sort of panic in his face. He's like, what? Like, like what? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but Joel also confides in the fact that he thinks he's falling apart. Basically, he talks about not being able to hear properly. The fact that he keeps falling asleep. He's having these attacks. He's having these dreams where he cannot remember what they are, but they hurt him really badly. Obviously related to Sarah more than anything else. In fact, we had an earlier scene where we kind of see that when he's supposed to be at lookout all night and he falls asleep and Ellie ends up taking over. You know, mm. it's this, this is what we're building to, that Joel can't do it on his own. He's going to have to rely a little bit on Ellie. He's going to, going forward, or others going forward. 
I agree with that, but I, I, I kind of think that he's he, he is now, and obviously uh, towards the end of the at the end of the episode, that he's now developing this relationship with Elena. Not that she's his daughter, but he he now, he now sees her. He see, he he's now basically a father figure to her, which is what I think is happening here. I think the fact that he now cares about Ellie. And yes. that he's worried about her, her and what might happen. And he's probably not. The, the feeling of a loss he's feeling in him right now is because, in theory, when he takes her to the Fireflies, they go separate ways. In fact, they have a talk about it in this, about what they'd yep. want to do afterwards. It's off the cuff. And they actually end up coming back to it afterwards in a little bit more jovial way. But mm. they talk about it then. I think that's building up. He's got that same impending sense of loss for somebody he cares about. It's different to the loss of Sarah. But what it's doing is bringing that feeling that he's buried about Sarah back to the forefront. He's yep. not thought or spoke about her anywhere as much in this episode. That had compared, like anywhere in the, ep- the previous episodes as he does in this one. Yeah. In, this, yeah, yeah. in this one. In fact, you know, he even gets into it with Ellie about Sarah. For the first mm-hmm. time. So he does ask, basically, he asks Tommy to take Ellie to the Fireflies and manages to con- convince Tommy based on the fact that this is the last thing I'm going to want you to do. You know the area. You know how to take her there. Take her. Come back. And I won't ask you for anything again. So again, so Tommy does agree. So, but seemingly Ellie overheard that as um, she's waiting in the bedroom and Joel goes to see her to tell her. This, of course, is a famous scene from the game. Most people seem to be happy with how it was portrayed. They argue. Sarah is brought up. Um, and basically, Joel leaves. Yeah. I thought it was good. I liked it, yeah. But when he goes back to his bedroom, it's the first time we see him actually think about Sarah. And he's like, okay, so it is happening then. Mm-hmm. Yep. In the morning, Ellie is ready to go. Uh, you can see she's sitting in the bedroom and she hears a knock on the door. And she hopes it's going to be Joel, but it's not. It's Tommy. And they leave and find Joel uh, putting a horse together and stuff like that. Um, Ellie's Ellie sort of was like, oh, you're waiting to say goodbye and all that. He was like, no, I snuck out to steal this horse half an hour ago. Again, there's lots of funny scenes here yeah. where you have like Tommy just go, but I've given you a horse. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> stop stealing shit. You ain't got to do this here. You ask me and I'll help you, you know? You see that with their guns earlier on. There is a very strong scene as well, um, getting a lot of praise where they deal with you know, the issue of, of uh, menstruation in an apocalyptic situation and, yep. uh, you know, that kind of thing. So there are lots of little touches throughout this episode, as always, where you kind of get that vibe that, you know, this is real. It makes it feel more real. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. But Joel says to Ellie, look, I decided you should have a choice. And he doesn't even get to finish it. <laughs> she just shoves her pack in his arms and says, come on, up. basically, let's go. I yep. loved it. Loved it. Yeah, I was like, that is it, you know? Yeah, no, and after brilliant. this, and after this, as they ride towards um, the Firefly base, where they're going to drop Ellie's going to deliver Ellie effectively, they're way more jovial. In fact, that he smiles, they laugh, they con- con- converse, and he even talks a lot more about his past as well, and they delve deeper into it. Earlier on, they do that as well with the contractor scene and stuff like that. That's good stuff. Yeah, yeah I do think, uh, for, for me personally, it's, it's, it's good the fact that he... Uh, I, 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 now, I, now, I now believe that, that he now believes that, that she trusts him. Literally, they, 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 they both have this connection now where they both know that they they both need each other, basically, to I survive. Think I think he, in his, you know, he, he realised that he wanted to be... He wanted to do this. He wanted to do it. He cared about her. This wasn't the right way to do it. Probably thought it wasn't fair to do it to Tommy either. I do love that when, you know, um, Tommy, they depart. He's, you know, Tommy says, look, you know, we've got a place for you. And the plan is for them to come back. Like there's no yep. non-plan to come back. That's, which I loved as well, you know? Well, at yes. least for Joel to come back and basically yes. get his sheep farm. Because that's what he wants is a sheep farm. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is where it does speed up quickly, as basically we cut to them arriving at the University of Eastern Colorado in five days. It's just said in an off-the-cuff way where Joel's like, because it, it's said that it will take them a week. And Joel's like, oh, it only took us five days. And it's yeah. like, fine, it's fine. We, we can't just spend all the time with them on horseback. We have to get there faster. Of course. But, it, but they find it empty. Uh, they find it empty and seemingly deserted. Not like we're infected or like there was a battle or anything, just like people got up and left. And looking around, they realize, find a map that basically they decided to, the Fireflies decided to leave this place and go to St. Mary's Hospital in St. Lake, Salt Lake City in Utah. 
you know, I like the balance scene. I, 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 I love the, the, the whole monkeys when when in wild. Yeah, yep. it's really cool. It was, it was really cool that for that fact because it really shows you how nature has really has taken, taken over. Yeah, yeah, because of course, as well, famously in the game, there was of course the giraffe scene, and I am wondering uh, if it will happen or not. Mm. So we'll get to that. Uh, the only thing I didn't like was when they go and hear the noise and go into the room to check it out. The monkeys in there were the CGI in there was pretty bad. I was like, ooh, yeah. that didn't look great. Mm. Um, but before they can leave, they see it, they hear and see a group of raiders. You know, Joe looks at the window, four dudes with weapons. You can kind of tell straight away they don't look friendly. Yeah. So they try to sneak out, they manage to get to the horse, but one of the raiders sneaks up or at least approaches Joel. He doesn't hear him coming because obviously his deafness is causing an issue, but Ellie does give him a shout, and Joel and him fight. He is Joel does manage to kill him. And then they're able to get on the horse and ride away. But while he's struggling with the guy, Joel gets stabbed. A uh, broken bit of baseball bat lodged in his stomach. Now, of course, again, for you game people, this is different from the game. In it, he actually gets stabbed or gets, uh, he falls and a bit of rebar gets stuck in his back. And that's mm. it. But basically, this is just a variation on it. Um, again, I've seen people overanalyzing this. And I'm like, does it matter? The result is the fucking same if it was the front or the back. Yeah, it, it, it makes no difference. He, he got stabbed. He got stabbed. They get on the horse. They ride off. They escape. Um, the, the the three men try to give chase, but they're on foot. They ain't catching up with a galloping horse, put it that way. But way further down the road, we see that Joel is pale. He's obviously lost a lot of blood, and he falls from the horse, collapsing in the snow, closes his eyes, and that's how the episode ends, with Ellie begging him to... to, to not die, basically, because I can't carry on without you. I can't do this yeah. without you. You know, um, I think I think you'd be a fool to believe that Joel was dead. If he, it's like if you're one of those who don't know the game, and you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe they killed off Joel. I mean, there's nothing about that that was definitive. I, my, my wife goes, oh, is he dead? I'm like, you know, you can oh, close your eyes. You can close your eyes and be unconscious, yeah. not dead, you know? But I was like, they're not going to kill off one of the main, main two characters, Luke. <laughs> And there, there, there's no way they, they're gonna. They, I mean, so there, there, there's no way they're gonna kill out, especially the six episodes in it for God's sake. You know. No, uh, no, and it's it, it, it's not where the story's got to go. But we needed this to happen. This is part of the story. Just tune in for episode seven to see what happens next. Effectively, but yeah, I did thoroughly enjoy this. I enjoyed this for its quieter pacing, for its slower pace, for getting to see normal life and having a real having the belief that hey, shit. Life could carry on. People could live and be happy as much as humanly possible. I mean, how many, how many like TV series or films can you sit there and go, do you know what? This film is about, this TV series is about some virus with infection and monsters. And like literally probably out of the six episodes, six episodes we've only seen the monsters like, a handful, a handful of times. It's a handful of times. It's a mainly story, and the story and talking and assuming, but it, it's it still works, and, it's, and I, I've really, really enjoyed you know, the whole lot. Yeah, I've got no complaints here. Again, uh, it's just constantly. Ca- I look forward to it every week. I'm like, mm. oh, sweet, The Last of Us is on. You know, um, can't wait to watch it. That kind of thing. Like it, and I don't really do that about much. Like I'll watch movies, I'll watch shows, and I'll enjoy them thoroughly. You know, and things like that. Um, but with Last of Us, I'm like, oh, sweet. It, you know, it's on. And I, I actually get your thing here now where I'm like, oh, man, at least with Halo, we could just watch them whenever we wanted. Yeah. Like, you know, like there is that kind of thing. But we only have three more episodes to go for the this season. It's been fun and it's been nice to follow along. I think we're now going to see a series ramping up as we make our way towards the finale. But for now, um, keep it up. I can't, I can't see it going wrong. Can you? No, and I'm still I'm still waiting for that episode where we go. Oh, okay, do you know what? It's the it's the first okay episode. That it's the right? First episode. But uh, so far, you know, I said six out of six. There it is, six out of six. The Last of Us episode six. Kin, you got any thoughts that you know what to do? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. If you really liked what you saw. Consider donating to keep the website and channel running by buying us a coffee via our coffee page or picking up some merch from our big cartel store. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as via our social media, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. As well as listen to our interviews via SoundCloud, Apple Music and Spotify. Just search for GBHBL. 
games, horror, and heavy metal. What else is life for?